Hello, and welcome to the first ever episode of The Interesting Podcast with Jedi Brian. Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys right out the gate. Uh, this is maybe my mm, tenth time recording this intro, because I kept trying to get it perfect, but you know what? I don't do perfect very well, apparently. But, uh, hey, thanks for, uh, thanks for listening to this. Um, I appreciate it, because you don't know what it is yet. Um, the Interesting Podcast is going to be a... A show where I have somebody on whom I find interesting, be that actors, casting directors, producers, to firemen, or um, cosplayers. You know, anyone anyone I find interesting that I want to talk to and that I can trick to uh, come talk to me for an hour. But this episode is actually a YouTuber Josh Cummins. We, uh, we were actually in a movie together, and uh, he's a really, really cool dude who's from Australia, and... Um, help me kick this thing off so uh, i really hope you guys enjoy this and um i'd appreciate any feedback now being that this was my first podcast i was actually really nervous um so it came across a little more formal and uh much more of like an interviewing process which josh was a champ um and yeah it's um i mean i hope you guys like it you know uh and stuff so here it is, I guess, the first uh, interesting podcast with YouTuber Josh Cummins. Hey, Josh. Hi, man. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. How's your day going? Um, you know, it's pretty good. I, I slept in for a bit. Yeah, I was the last one to wake up. Cool, cool. You know, that's what you get when you're an actor. Yeah, that's what I hear. That's what I hear. So you're in Tethered. Yes. Tethered. Tethered. Tell us a little bit about the movie. Um. Well, it is... A fantastic movie, I think. Cool. I think cool. It's not a student film. It's not a short film. It's by a director who is very focused on it. Cool. And low budget. The plot is amazing. It's very different to what you are watching these days. And the script is is well written. It's well written. Very cool. Very cool. What uh, what genre would you put it in? I'd put it. Mm, that's, it that's, is hard. It is, it is a hard, hard one. I'd I'd put it in a, a drama thriller. Drama thriller. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Cool. And you play? I play Johnny. Johnny. And who is Johnny? Johnny is Q's replacement. Without trying to spoil the movie, right? His right. part is a not a big role, not a small role. Um, is a hacker, part of a gang. Sort okay. Of. Cool. Cool. Yeah, and um, very cocky. Very comes in out of nowhere, thinks he knows everything. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so he's like the young guy trying to prove exactly. stuff. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. How did you? Uh, how did you get the part? Like, how how was that auditioning process? Um, I didn't actually audition. Really? Mm, it was about two o'clock in the morning. I go. I go in green room, Orlando. Okay. To and that's a website. Casting, yeah, to find casting notices around Florida, and I went on there and I saw tethered. Dimitri put it up on there and. They said, if you want this role for Johnny, email this, um, email Dimitri. And I was like, okay. But I didn't email him. I just added Chris and Dimitri on Facebook. Gotcha. Next thing you know, I got a message from Chris saying, hey, you're an actor. You live in Tampa. You want this role? I was like, yeah, okay. So didn't have to email them at all. Didn't have to audition. Got the role straight away. Hey, there you go. Mm -hmm. And you live in Tampa. So you actually have to drive down for yeah, this. Yeah. It's about a two and a half hour drive. Gotcha. That's commitment. It is. Commitment. But it's, it's worth it. I mean, this is a great set to be on. Very cool, yeah, very cool. This is a, it's it. a feature. It is, it's a yeah. Full length movie. Yeah, it's not just some short film or student film. It's a proper feature length. Very cool. Yeah. And uh, have you done anything like this before? I've done I've done a few student films, a few short films. Cool. But I do a lot of my own stuff on YouTube. So really, yeah. So what do you do, what do you do on YouTube? Um, I make I make skits. I talk to a camera about my life. I film my life. I talk about lifestyle stuff. It's very, very nice. Huh? How long have you been doing that? Just over a year, yeah. I started February last year, so. And how do you like it? Um, it's it's interesting. Yeah. You know, I've I feel very lucky. I've gained a following from it. Cool. A lot of people will start YouTube there and get a following. Sure. Straight away. So I, I think I'm very lucky. What do you think the key to that is? The key to that is. Like, what do you attribute to your following? How you acquired it, if you were to guess. How do how do I get a following? Yeah. Marketing. Yeah, it's all okay. about you. Got to have social networks. You got to have Twitter, Instagram. You can't just do YouTube. You've sure. got to interact with your followers, and you got to let your followers know that you're there for them. Gotcha. That's and what I do a lot. What made you want to do YouTube? Like, just one day decided, 
I'm going to make videos. Well, I used to watch a lot of YouTubers okay. before doing YouTube and I've always been interested in it. And a lot of my friends had started it, but never really continued it. Okay. And, um, I just decided, Hey, you know, I thought about doing it and I just took out my iPhone, put it on a bunch of books as my tripod filmed. And that was my first video. And it was really, really bad. Really? What, oh, what was yeah. your first video? Sorry? What was your first video? It was me introducing myself, talking about like different facts about me. Okay, cool. And just the quality. It wasn't focused. The lighting <laughs> was bad. It was, I was too busy playing with my hair. It was, it's still up. There's it's a lot of hair. Public. There's a lot of hair to play with. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, everyone's first video is bad. Sure, sure. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, you, you can only learn from there. Yeah, you got to figure it out and then you grow in yeah. quality and then get into the swing of it. Exactly. So if you watch my videos now compared to my first video, I've grown so much. What has been it. what has been the hardest part about it? The hardest part is um, what your viewers think and haters. Gotcha. I feel very lucky to have not had a lot of haters. Right. But um, there are a few every now and then who don't like your content and they'll like sure. tell you about it. You just got to block and report. That's the key. Right. And report. Right. And, um, but like I said, I feel very lucky. I haven't really experienced a lot of that. And do you edit all the videos yourself as well? Yes. Yes, I do. Wow. I'm very, I enjoy editing. A lot of people don't like editing, but I, I enjoy it very much. Yeah, I'm not I, a fan. I look so forward to editing, not really filming. Really? Yeah. I just like sitting down and like creating something because it all comes down to the editing. Very Everything. true. Very you true. You can film something fantastic. Like say we have like so many great actors, Leonardo DiCaprio. We film a movie with them. It all comes down to the editing. Very true. Because they can use the bad cuts and make them look terrible if they felt like it. Exactly. I always thought that there'd be like a, a very hateful editor in Hollywood that like keeps the really bad <laughs> takes and just waits for his moment. And then just posts it on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> Viral video. Holds them for ransom. I'm the, there's probably someone out there that's That'd got that. Good. So do you do, what do you edit on? Final Cut. Final Cut. Mm. I tried Final Cut. It is not as easy as you would think right out the bat. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's... There's a learning curve. It is, yeah. <laughs> I taught myself. I didn't really, I don't really watch YouTube videos on how to learn it, so... Really? You yeah. just figured it out, started pressing mm. buttons. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I started off using iMovie. Okay. But okay. Um, I didn't really like it. Yeah? Yeah, so I, I went over to Final Cut, and I love Final Cut. Interesting. Interesting. Have you tried uh, any of the other ones? Is iMovie straight to Final Cut? Yes, yeah, just straight to Final Cut. I've heard. Um, I've heard a Premiere is good. I I edit on Premiere. You do? I do is all my good? stuff on Premiere. It's it's easier for me. Yeah. I um I do, I do a lot of video editing. It's not my favorite part. Is but uh, <laughs> I I did Final Cut when it was uh, I think they're on ten now. Somewhere mm -hmm. they passed ten. Something like that. Yeah. It was like maybe six or seven mm -hmm. years ago, and it was I liked the text effect. Mm -hmm. You're able to do more than with like Windows Media Player and stuff like or Movie Maker, sorry. Um, do you do the Photoshop as well for titles and stuff like that? Or you do it all in Final Cut? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I do Photoshop, yeah. And you taught yourself that? Yes. I've been doing Photoshop since high school. So I did I took a design class when I was in seventh and eighth grade. Yeah, seventh gotcha. and eighth grade. And um or maybe eighth and ninth, I don't know. But um yeah, that was all about using Photoshop and powerpoint all that sort of stuff and i just learned myself so very cool and um you're from australia yes talk about that what, what's what's the did you have any culture shock when you moved here um i first moved here when i was 10 okay and i moved to dc interesting so i had, was already used to america and what it was like okay so i've been back and forth a few times i already knew what was about to happen and the attention i would get because right. I've received a lot of attention from my accent. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Some good, <laughs> some not so good, but... Gotcha. Yeah. The not so good are people who wish they had it. Yeah, I guess. Or they're like, oh, nice British accent. I'm like, it's not It's not British. Uh, right. it's, it's Australian. Gotcha. Can you do a New Zealand accent? Um, Cause it's like the off-brand I'm not really good Australian. with accents. I mean, New Zealand is all about like, brah. Like they say, hey, brah. Right, or right. Very, very. Uh, I guess it's ghetto here. Is that what you guys say? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Slang ish. There's mm. a lot of yeah, a lot of offensive very, ways to yeah. say it as well. Exactly. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. So you were here at ten first, then you moved back to Australia, mm -hmm. and then you just came back here a year ago. Yes. How long is that flight? How long have like the flight from Australia? Oh. I'm sure you connect somewhere. Or do yes. you fly straight to California and then over? I we flew to Dallas from Dallas to here. Gotcha. So it's about eighteen hours. Oh, 
That is a it's very a long, long time. time. <laughs> it is. It's a really long time. It messes with your head with the time zones. The oh, I'm sure. Lag. It takes a few weeks to get over it. Are you able to sleep on planes? On the way here, I couldn't sleep on the plane. There was so much turbulence, I just couldn't do really? it. Really? Oh, yeah. That's got to be not fun. I was freaking out. Over the ocean. Yeah, like, I was There's nothing here. <laughs> you know, we go down. Oh, You weren't nothing. flying Malaysia Airlines? No, no. <laughs> Qantas, man. Qantas. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. So what, what's it what's it like growing up in Australia? Like how how would you attribute it to growing up here as far as differences go? Being ten here and then your teenage years in Australia? Um I'm very culturally acceptable. Okay. Whereas that makes sense. a lot of people in Australia don't really have they don't really have any experience with other countries. Right. So me growing up in America, I'm not really as racist or as I'm very multicultural with everything okay. because I know I've experienced, cause we don't really have a lot of black people in Australia. Gotcha. Whereas okay. here there are a lot of black people. Sure. And because I've already interacted with them, I'm not as racist as people in Australia because Australians are very kind of racist. Gotcha. I'm sure um, if they don't have anything to show it to, exactly. they've only here and then yeah. preconceived notions. Yeah. So because I've experienced what another country's like, I bring it back to Australia and I'm like, Hey, you know, that's not right or anything like that. I, I right. try to teach others because I've experienced what it's like. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Have you, did you travel a lot in Australia? Yes. I've, uh, I've been all around Australia. I've been to Europe. I've been, I've moved around Australia a lot. Very yeah. cool. What parts of Europe? I've been to London and Paris. Which did you like better? <sighs> let's dissect the audience right now. Okay, let's go. Um, probably London. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, I love the British accent. Oh, that's fair. Girls with a British accent. That is very fair. Girls with Australian accents what, are pretty want. great. I can't tell the difference. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of Americans can't either. Yeah. I'm sure you know. Oh, yeah. Trust me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> wow. So what is, uh, what is something that people wouldn't expect from Australia? Like going there, what's something that you would be like, all right, if you're going to Australia, you need to know this okay. besides the racism. <laughs> um, we're so nice. Yeah? Yes. I like, can see that. If, you, if you're like lost in the city or something, just talk to someone. They'll help you. Cause, really? Yeah, Australians are considered the nicest people in the world. I can see that. And especially if you're from a different country, like we understand, we'll help you. So we're all very giving and helpful. Gotcha. I'm now, sure everyone's heard that. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't met an Australian I didn't like. You're like the Canadians on the other side of the world. <laughs> Canadians are pretty great. Um, how's... Uh, how's, how's Going back, how uh, how's been filming this movie for you? How are you liking it? The cast, the crew, um, the work. It's fantastic. Yeah, um, I remember reading the casting notice, and it said the casting crew are like family, and I'm like, you know, that's the dream. Sure, a casting crew that's family, and I was like, you know, they're probably just saying that, but then I come here, and we are like family. It's it's so much fun. It's it's, it's an instant mesh. Exactly. It's very cool. Yeah, and I, I I think I spoke to you about this yesterday. There's no money involved. Yeah, so it's no true. no one cares about the money. It's just all about the experience and having fun. Yes. And creating such a great It's film. all for the art and everyone's yeah. there. That's the best thing about it, not being for money, mm. is uh, there's creative liberties that you can take. Exactly. You know, there's room and Chris is a, is a great director. Oh, fantastic. In the sense that he knows what he wants. He knows how to talk to an actor to get the performance that he needs out of them. Mm -hmm. But he also encourages improv. Exactly. And like feel the scene. He says scene. he's not married to the script. Exactly. Which is great. Yes. You know, you need to know your lines, sure, so you know what you're saying. But yeah. at the same time, you want to be in the moment and be like, I feel like my character would say this. Exactly. There's, there, there's been a, a couple times where I'm like, you know, being an Australian, because I'm an Australian character in the film, I'm using oh, an accent. Oh, cool. So I'm like, an Australian wouldn't say that word. So I change it up and I'm like, you know, Australian would say this and Chris would be like, okay, that sounds so much better. Do that. I'm like, thank you. Like... Gotcha. It's the role better. Sure, yeah. sure. Um, so you, you've read the whole script? Yes. And um, how, how did you get into your character? I'm sure you brought the Australian yourself, because it wasn't written, yes. he's Australian, mm -hmm. which is cool. It adds diversity, and that's mm, a really nice Yeah, touch. definitely, yeah. So how did you prepare for the role when you know you got it? Well, I had a look at the script, and it says the first line of the page that I start filming like the first page that i'm in sure in your introduction yes in the film it says i'm a cocky 
badass who thinks he knows everything or something like that. Oh, nice. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, you know, this was me growing up. I used to be a, a show off. I used to be an arrogant piece of shit. Right. And then I was like, you know, I can fit into this role so perfectly. And being an Australian, I mean, that just brings out the character even more having the accent. It really, right. you know, I don't know why, but that just fits the role even better. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And you can, you know, Australian so well that you can get that extra little bit yeah. of authenticity to the character. Exactly. Yeah. Very cool. So I was like, you know, I'm, I already know what to do and everything. So I used to, I would go over my lines with my parents and I, you know, I'd be a cocky sort of guy the next sort of week and my parents got sick of it. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, how did you, how did you react when you got the part? Um, I was like, well, okay, that was easy. <laughs> I didn't audition or anything, so. Right. But um, usually I've seen a lot of casting notices because it said it was in Fort Myers. Gotcha. And usually I've seen previous casting notices where I'm like, nah, I don't want to do it because it's such a long drive. Sure. But because I got the role and I had watched behind the scenes footage on the channel. Oh, okay. Before, so I was like, you know, this this seems like so much fun. So I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna do it. I don't care. Right. Do it. And the greatest decision ever. I'm so glad I made this it's, decision. It's fun. It's, it's very a lot fun. Of fun. Yeah. It's and, worth the drive. And as an actor, like in between takes, you pretty much do what you want. Exactly. Like, don't I mean, get in the way. All, we're always joking. We're like, you know, <laughs> casting crew. No, you know, the crew's doing everything, and the actors are just playing beer pong or something. Right. Like, we're just mucking around doing nothing. Riding on skateboards. Exactly. Making the director nervous because we might hurt ourselves. <laughs> exactly. So much fun. We're annoying the car. We're annoying the crew as well. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Turning off lights. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, that's what the button does. Oh, yeah. How do it's you? Like, what does this do? This? It's a microphone. Oh, don't touch it. Oh, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Were you nervous driving down here? Like For, before you had got to the set, you didn't know what to expect. Like, like meeting everyone. Yeah. Like what's going through your head on the drive down here for the first time? Um, of course I was nervous. Like you know. You get this role and you're meeting people for the first time. You're, you're alone as well. You're not with your parents. You're, right. You know, you, you, these guys could be real creeps or anything. Sure. That's every time I'm going and I'm meeting like a new crew or anything, it's, it's nervous. Yeah. You're always nervous. Um, but I don't know, something, something about the behind the scenes and like watching the cast, I felt a bit more comfortable about it. And, gotcha. Um, this is what I want to do. I want to be an actor. So I was like, you know, big actors always say like you know they started off by traveling far to go to auditions or to go to their um shooting right so you know you got to make that drive if you want to do it otherwise if you don't want to do it then you're not going to be an actor you, you not all shootings not all shoots are like in your area right you've got to drive far. you got to pay your dues exactly right you got to do what you got to do gotcha so you've always wanted to be an actor or when did you make that decision um i was in my final couple final years of High school. I was year eleven, year twelve. I took drama as a, I thought of, I took drama as a bludge subject. Like you know, it's easy. I can do yeah, it. Yeah, why not? Yeah, I never want to be an actor before that. Um, and then it was my teacher, Mr. George Vafius. I'm his. He inspired me so much. He really um, created this um, motivation for me to be an actor. Very cool. So, um, so you've done theater. Yes. Yes. How he, how do you like theater to film? How, did, um, how is it different for you? I f they're both very different. I, I like theatre because you're in the moment more. Sure. Like, you know, it's not like you get to stay in character longer. Whereas True. film, you're a character and then it's cut, move the next scene. Or it's like a couple of days later. Whereas theatre, your whole night, you're the actor. Right. And you've got, there's no second takes. Exactly. You gotta stay in it. Yeah. That's what I like about theatre. But then again, I like film. I like a bit of both. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So, who are some of your favorite actors? Um, I like Leonardo DiCaprio, Fair. Jake Gyllenhaal, uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. They're pretty cool. So, what is a what's what's one of your favorite movies by them? Like, what is it about them that you like so much? I really like Great Gatsby. Great Gatsby was very good. Yes, and Birdman. Birdman was insane. I, yeah, the, the shooting in that. It's like the Phantom Warner. You yeah. know, it's like all one shot. It's amazing. How did you, spoiler alert, how did you feel about the ending? Of Birdman? Yes. I was confused. I'm okay. Gonna be honest. I am as well. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? I thought about it a lot. Like, did he go out the window? Did, is his daughter crazy? She's looking down and yeah. then she looks up. I'm like, is he flying? Like, is he in heaven? Yeah. Like, what? 
Um, there's a lot of conspiracy theories about it. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. I googled a bit up. I googled a bit up. Yeah, I need answers. Yeah, I need to know what's <laughs> going on. Um, you know, and what watching a movie like that, you gotta you gotta Google mistakes. Like you gotta see what mistakes oh, sure. were in the movie. So like I watched. I Google like mistakes happen in Birdman because you know there's always going to be mistakes. absolutely in especially a in a like one that, shot exactly you know so um I was watching mistakes I'm like oh really so I went back and watched I was like oh yeah that's something they could have like easily fixed but something they probably didn't notice right yeah and you, you know you'll be surprised at how many mistakes were in that film oh I'm sure yeah I, when I was watching it all I could think of like how much preparation went into this yeah you, you know, know what I mean it's like theater it's all it one is. thing yeah like, people have to come in on their cues and then the light drops yeah. and he get, he goes into a scene puts a wig on comes out of the scene takes a wig off and continues exactly someone messes up we've got to start all over yeah so oh, that, man. that would suck insane yeah and Edward Norton was crazy in it oh he's def- like he's one of my favorites he's so good well. he was that so whole Good scene when he's like you took my booze out yeah you place it with water and has yeah, that like, freak sh- out throws the it's like that's the scene that's oh man so he's like I, I got this thing just roll just feed me the line yeah the first oh, time he comes on oh that's one of my favorites beautiful in movie. beautiful such right. a good movie so uh Leo DiCaprio did you see Wolf of Wall Street yes that movie is bonkers it is great it is off the hook it the whole time so just good Jonah Hill as well Oh yeah, Jonah. <laughs> you know what one of my favorite roles of Jonah Hill is? That's it's minor, but did you ever see Django Unchained? I've seen the first uh, half an hour of it. Yeah, can't really get into it for some reason. Ah oh, man, dude, Jonah Hill is in it like yeah. for like ten minutes, and he is fantastic. Just ten minutes. It's so really? funny. Makes like a slight little cameo thing yeah. as this like racist cowboy guy. It's so <laughs> funny so funny uh, I, everyone says you gotta keep watching it so I probably will eventually it's uh do you like Tarantino movies eh. that makes sense a lot of it's not yeah. for everybody yeah exactly you know, cause they are like their own genre almost mm. you know what I mean he's mm. got like he's got the great storytelling but he's got the like over the top blood yeah I always said the Tarantino factor was like you prick your finger and it sprays enough to blind someone mm-hmm. you know like Kill Bill and stuff exactly. like that yeah yeah uh, who are some of your favorite directors favorite directors um Steven Spielberg of course. Mans Scorsese. Of course. Um, I think that's about it, yeah. Yeah. Those they, two. Uh, oh, Tim Burton. Oh, Tim Burton's Tim good. Burton. Tim yeah. Burton's good. If you want to be claymation. Yeah. <laughs> very cool. Very so cool. creative. So, um, I want to talk about the movie, but the I also movie. can't give any spoilers. The movie. You know, I'd be like, hey, you remember that end part? <laughs> yeah. You know that part where that, that, that yeah, person... Where, where yeah, that, that, thing, that thing happened? Yeah, there's, there's people in it. Yeah. Um, what advice would you give to someone who wanted to start in YouTube? Just do it. Yeah? Just do it. What's the hardest part about just doing it? Because that happens a lot where, where people ask, and yeah, I mean, it does come down to you just need to do it. Exactly. But what do you think is the hardest part about just doing it? Do you think it's equipment, or for you, was it like a mental thing? Like you need to hype yourself up and just, I don't care anymore, let's go. Because I'm sure a lot of people don't do it because they are scared of the feedback they'll get. Yes. And stuff, you know? It's not the equipment at all. Okay. If you've got an iPhone, you can film. Okay. Film great. You can f- iPhone great footage on the iPhone. Sure. Yeah. People don't really film on their webcam anymore because viewers don't want to watch that. Sure. Sure. Because they're HD now. You don't want to watch a webcam. Yeah. Footage. You don't want a six forty by exactly. four eighty resolution. Yeah, pixelated and like slow. Right. You don't want that. So if you got an iPhone or any camera at all, you can start filming and then, you know, eventually, go into a proper camera. Right, but right. um, equipment's not that big of a deal. Like I started on an iPhone. You see big YouTubers these days. They've they started on webcam. Right, so right. So they started from the Shay Carl nothing. was yeah, webcam. Then he exactly. moved up to the flip. Exactly. Yep. And he's he's casually growing. I think he's got like a G seven X now. So <laughs> yeah, it's a great camera. It is a great camera. Um, I think the main part of it is the mentality. Yeah, they they're scared of what feedback they're going to receive, whether it's negative. Because you put up your first video. You get hate. Oh, for You're sure. Like, oh, okay. I, I'm getting hate. I don't want to do this anymore. Right. You gotta. If you get hate, you, they're just jealous because they're not. They're not brave enough to put up their own video. That's that's what haters are. Right. Yeah. Right. You just gotta push through it, and you know that's what I did. I pushed through it, and look where I am now. Right. I'm on a movie set. Like. Very true. Yeah. I I knew if I had never continued on with YouTube, I probably wouldn't be here. It's 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 very interesting that like. 
uh, with our world being basically run by social media, where value is attributed to followers. Yeah. You know, people will lose roles because they don't have enough Twitter followers. Exactly. It's very interesting to see what can become of stuff now. Yeah. You know? I've had directors talk to me and they're like, you know, the only reason why we hired you was because of your followers. I'm like, okay, so my acting had nothing to do with it. Right. Like, am I a bad actor? <laughs> like, I don't know. But, I don't know um, how to take this. Is this like, is this a thank good you? Thing or but a bad thing? What am I um, here for? <laughs> but it's definitely like the amount of followers definitely, definitely affects whether you got the role or not. Of course. Of course. Because it's all about the promotion of the film. For sure. And with someone taking a gamble on if you hadn't acted in something before, they, even if you're bad, you're yeah. still a platform. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I always, uh, I always am amazed at Vine. Vine, yeah. Because I, I don't do it myself. I tried Neither it a little I. bit. But I've seen people that started on Vine and now they're like paid for commercials and exactly. they get flown places. Like that was an app on it's a, a phone. It's a six second clip. You know? And now they're doing real things. Exactly. And it's six seconds that wasn't even like a production. It was people on their phones in That's their it. houses. Yeah. And I'm now, bored one day. I'm going to make a six second exactly. clip. Exactly. And now they're on commercials. Exactly. And TV. It's, it's crazy. Know? It's the power of the internet. Yeah. You know, you look at Alex from Target. I know. You know, like that's just an attractive dude bagging groceries. <laughs> yeah. And Alex from Target, like he was just an attractive guy. Some girl took a photo of him and let's be honest here. He's, he's making YouTube videos now. Oh, is he? Yeah. Okay. I didn't not know that. Not the best videos. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. He's not that creative. But sure. It's kind of like Alex from Target that kind of annoyed me a bit. Yeah, I, I Only completely understand the books. It's like a Kardashian sort of principle. Yeah. Like you haven't really done anything and yet, yet you, you know have this kind of platform famous. given to you. You've whereas, got nearly a million followers on Twitter. Yes. It's, it's kind of unfair. I yeah. agree. I completely agree. It's, yeah. it's very interesting what will, because you never know what's going to work. Mm. You know, like trying to make stuff you don't know what's going to catch. You'll mm. be like, this is a great idea. I'm sure it'll go viral. And yeah. it doesn't. Exactly. And then you get people that's like exactly, absolutely. Especially if you put a lot of effort into it. Yeah. Speaking of, where do you come up with ideas for your videos? Are they just, oh, that's interesting. I'm gonna do it. Um, I get inspired by a lot of my friends. Yeah. A lot of my friends are so creative, and they don't have they. Some of my friends have like twenty thousand subscribers. Some of my other friends have like three hundred subscribers. Right. But I don't really focus on their subscriber count. I focus on the content they make. Sure. Um, and the content they make is like so creative, it's mind blowing. Right. Um, I change. I'm very indecisive. I'm a very indecisive person. I so feel you. <laughs> I, I I like make up a plot or I like a script or I create an idea and I'm like, yeah, this is gonna sound great. This is gonna be great. And then I film it. I'm like, nah, I don't like it. Right. So um, I've been there. And it, it's tough. You really, you know, people say you gotta make relatable videos, you Q and A's or like tag videos or challenges. Sure. I'm not really into that. That's so typical, like, oh, you're doing a challenge, like, I, th- I feel like if you're only doing challenge videos and, like, those sort of Q&A videos, you're only doing YouTube to get rich and to get famous or try and get rich and famous. Right. I feel like if you're creating your own content that's not really out there yet, you want to create the new, new cliche. Gotcha. That's the goal in life. Makes sense. Yeah. And if you do that, you don't care about what people think of your videos. You care about what you want to create. Right, right. It's that's absolutely. I, yeah, that's how I do it. Because challenges and stuff like that is just following the movement. Exactly. You're not putting you're, your yeah. own thing out. You're just following the crowd. You, you want to step away from the crowd and create your own thing and then have people follow you and then keep doing it. Like keep breaking out of the crowd. Right. Keep doing that. Different is always good. Yeah, 100%. Different, different will always. like I. That's what makes the world grow. Sure. I do, um, I do cosplay. Do a lot yeah. of costumes and stuff. And that's yeah. that's my following is that, mm-hmm. and um, I can I made a name for myself in Florida last year yeah. because I did. Have you ever seen Avatar: The Last Airbender? Yes, love that show. You, you know the cabbage merchant. Yes, that's yeah, me. Yeah. The guy, the the my cabbages. Yeah, the cabbage has fallen like nearly every single episode. Exactly. Yeah. Now I, I, I did that costume. Not a big character, by the way. Right? Yeah. No, he. I picked him because one, he's different. Exactly. And I wanted to do something that I hadn't seen before. Yeah. And I remember I debuted him at this convention in Miami. Mm-hmm. It was um, Animate Miami, January of 2014. Yeah. And that was my first like cosplay that I was like, I'm going to do this costume stuff. It's fun. It's fun to dress up. It you is, know, I like yeah. to act as well. Yeah. And, and you, you, don't, you don't feel alone. Everyone else is dressed exactly. up. Exactly. So. It's, it's the place to do it. You exactly. Know? You're not going to feel... In, you're not gonna feel like everyone's looking at you exactly you exactly and, it, and it's a celebration of the fandom exactly. you know what i mean everyone's there you all like the same stuff so it's like it's good fun exactly so i, I remember walking in 
And I was with two of my friends. And I was like, if one person knows who I am, I'm set. It's like, no one's probably going to know. But, yeah. you know, hey, I actually went to Publix and bought two cabbages. Right. And it really fits the <laughs> so people got to know. I remember right. walking in, like, hey, nobody's going to know. And every single person in that place knew who I was. Really? I mean, like, I couldn't get through the door. That must be such a good feeling. Dude, I know what it feels like to be a celebrity. Yeah. And I, there was a shock at first. I'm like, oh, my God. Because, like, I, childhood wasn't super great. You know, right. I was very small. Mm-hmm. Like, I was four foot ten when I graduated middle school. Really? And that's, like, legally dwarf height. Ugh. So I remember graduating middle school and being like, I'm a dwarf. All right, that's cool. I just accept it. Then I hit a growth spurt, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so, it wasn't super fun. So, that's my um, preconceived notion of people and how they're going to accept me. Mm-hmm. I don't get a lot of that. You know what I mean? So, I assume they're not going to. And when they do, it's like, what is this? So... I got there and I was there for eight hours. I never moved more than four feet at a time. Because people were just... They just stopped to take pictures. And we're like, can I get a picture? Oh, that's so cool. That must be like such a good feeling. It was like, I cannot describe it. Yeah. You know, and that was, I completely attribute it to, it was something they hadn't seen before. They were Mm -hmm. not expecting it. And it was that reminder of something that they love. So being different is always the way to go. A hundred percent. You know, like my, my costuming choices are always different. I'm like, what is something I haven't seen before that I really like? Yeah, so I completely, people, you're right. People don't care if they see the same thing. It's like, oh, okay, you're the same thing. Exactly. And then it turns into, like, the cosplay community is very awesome and very not awesome at the same time. Like, the, uh, the awesome part is, you know, what it is. It's an expression. It's fun. It's art. The not awesome part is it can very quickly turn into, like, a fashion show where people are comparing one another. Right. And it can, give, very it can get very hateful. You know, that's that's not what it's. Which I feel like that happens with everything creative. That's that kind of the YouTube world as well. Like I go to Playlist Live. We were talking about Playlist Live yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So a convention in Orlando. Orlando. They had one in New Jersey last year, which I drove up. Really? Yeah. They got one in VidCon. You know VidCon. I know VidCon. VidCon's the big one. That's where all the big YouTube. Really? There in a few weeks. Have you been before? No, not VidCon. I'm excited. If you see Jimmy Wong, tell him I said hi. Yep. Me and him are friends. I will. He's very cool. Um, I, I've had, I've had fans i don't really like that word fans i don't either it feels I don't weird like the word fans or famous i just it makes i like followers followers viewers supporters friends yes I call absolutely them friends. fans just feels dickish it's, to me yeah it is you like, feel too i got fans you know it's like no you don't no you don't <laughs> it's, it's annoying but um i've had viewers come up to me during conventions they're like oh i love you i love your videos i'm like me like you're talking about me right right <laughs> can i get a picture with you i'm like yeah yeah, yeah, all right. It's really weird and uncomfortable. Right. I don't really like fangirls. Yeah? You got fangirls? Yeah, man. Hey. Do, it's really uncomfortable sometimes. Oh, I can imagine. Like, Do they touch you? Like, I've had a girl say, hey, can I squeeze your butt? I'm really? Like, uh, all right. Were you and, like, she's, and she just squeezed my I'm butt. I'm for it? I'm like, yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, Squeeze why my not? butt. Her mom was right next to her. She didn't care. <laughs> I was like, this is really weird. You're like 15 and you want to squeeze my butt? <laughs> yeah. Can't How sh- old are you? And then, <laughs> yeah, how old are you first? <laughs> um, Depending on how old they are is how long they can squeeze your butt. Yeah. <laughs> I've had, I, it's like two o'clock in the morning at conventions. I've get, I get like direct messages saying, hey, come up to my hotel room. I'm like, I check the bio. They're like 14. Like, no, yeah, yeah. no. It's a trap. I'm not doing that. No, no, no. Um, but like I've had fangirls like go crazy when I tweet them or go crazy when I favorite their tweet, which That's makes cool. me uncomfortable. It's cool. Yeah. Makes oh, I'm sure. It makes me so uncomfortable. Because it's weird. Because you talk to a camera most of the time. Exactly. Yeah. I don't, I don't feel big. I've only got like 1,500 subscribers. That's that's impressive. It, 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 yeah. It's, I mean, that, that's work. You know it what is. I mean? That's like, I'm the exact same way. I put a lot in of In that effort. like, okay, well, I mean, in relation to others, like you know. Like people have like 4 million. Or, exactly. You know, yeah. but at the same time, you did very well. Yeah, yes. fifteen. There are people like, out there who I don't done even it know. Two hundred yeah. people. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've got I've got just under twelve hundred on my cosplay page, and I'm like, that is so that's, many people. Yeah. You know, fifteen for YouTube as well. I mean, that's that's a commitment. It is. You know and what I'm I mean? Ki- I keep going. I see. If I cared about numbers, and I've only got fifteen, I wouldn't. Be, I wouldn't still be doing it. Exactly. So exactly. I don't care about numbers. So do you do it because you feel like you have to? You got that like bit inside of you, like I need to get this out, or do you feel there, like a sense of obligation to your followers now? There was there was a time earlier this year where I thought about quitting YouTube. Yeah. Just because I felt like if I didn't put a video up, everyone f- would forget about me. Right. And then I had incidents with like other YouTubers where like there's, there's a small YouTube community 
I'm sure. And there's some like beef going on. Like, of course, there are always people is. are like, "Oh, you're only doing it for fame and only trying to get rich," and then that caused like fights and stuff. So, I'm sure. I'm sure that um, happens. It does. It's the Nipper community. Yeah, but um, it it um made me think like, man, I really don't want to get in all this. I really don't want to do all sure. this. Sure, sort of it can definitely turn something sour. Exactly. Yeah. So I I um I put up a video called seven days without social media okay uh where i literally a whole week deleted every single social media app really for seven days nothing and no I facebook met, twitter no instagram. facebook no twitter no instagram no snapchat wow and i put i basically made a little vlog explaining what's going on i went into acting mode i took it a bit like oh sure you gotta yeah. be day four i was like stressing out yeah. it's all Day four, I was like stressing out, like depressed. It was all acting. Right, hair People messed up, like, dirt yeah, on your face. Exactly. Yeah, I was getting up, punching the wall, punching the bed. <laughs> people, people took it seriously. So when when people are like, "Whoa, I thought you were being serious," I'm like, "Acting." It <laughs> yeah. makes you feel good when people think you're sure. Being you're like, <laughs> "Yeah, well, no, I'm pretty good at this thing." Um, but on a serious note, it changed me. Like seven days without social media, really? I, I realized how important my friends and family are sure you know the ones you were spending time with yeah, not the ones that you so weren't much, interacting yeah, with okay. i spent time with my family and it felt good i did not think about youtube i didn't think about my viewers on twitter or anything like that right it was good and then when i put that video up everyone i went back on twitter and everyone was freaking out like where are you like what's going on like i was like <laughs> seven oh, days oh no right? yeah <laughs> he died <laughs> seven days oh no what about his hair <laughs> So um, I put that video up and everyone was like, oh, like, that's such a good idea. Like, this is so great. I'm like, thank you. Like, it's, I'm very proud of that video. That's cool. How, yeah. how did you deal? Like coming back with there hundreds of notifications. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, I was like, oh, I'm back. I was just doing this. And they were like, oh, okay. So I put up a video a couple of days after coming back and they were like, oh, that, that makes sense. I'm like, yeah. Um, it felt good knowing that people missed me and people were like, sure. Yeah. It, it, it makes you feel good. Like people want to hear you. People want to. Right. Cause when you, you, when you put videos out there, you're, you're not sure the reaction they'll get or if anyone's even going to watch them, yeah. you go on a limb and put yourself out there. So it's very cool to have it returned. Yeah. Would you recommend that cleanse to other people? I'm going to be honest. People did it. Yeah. Yeah. Really? I, um, uh, none of, I, no one had ever done it. I don't think. Like right seven days without social media so especially I, with the narrative of going crazy yeah and exactly yeah. so um i i i'm pretty sure i started it and then a lot of my friends kind of did it they didn't do it for seven days and right. they didn't make a video about it <laughs> i did two days and i couldn't handle yeah. it <laughs> <laughs> they were like they were like oh you know because of josh i'm gonna take a couple of days off social media because i explained how good it was and how feeling like it made, made me feel refreshed sure especially after an incident with friends like oh of course yeah with that fighting and stuff it made me feel good about myself um, a lot of my friends did it, ended up doing it. They didn't make a video about it, but they did it. And they and had the they, same reaction? Yeah. They were like, I feel so much better now. And it's a good feeling knowing that you've caused other people to do such a good thing. Sure. No, that's, that's funny that you say that you've, you filmed yourself acting, uh, in, in the lull. Because yeah. I remember a time I got detention after school. Yeah. And, um, while I was in detention, it's like an hour or so after the bell rings, you have to go to this room and just sit for an hour. And they're like, this is your punishment. And I wrote journal entries as if I were in jail. Yeah. <laughs> they had a That must have passed the time. Oh right? man, it was fantastic. I was like, the warden stopped by, looked at my cell three times. And it was just the teacher coming up, seeing what I was reading. Yeah. You know, or they had a snack cart come in. I was like, they gave us food. It was awful. That's you know? so cool. <laughs> That really that would have been that would have made it interesting. I would have loved to go to detention. If yeah, right. Yeah. I only went once, and it felt like prison. Yeah. So I didn't do it again. You got <laughs> That's very neat. Um, who are some of your favorite YouTubers? Um, I used to. I when I first started, I was like, I like the young YouTubers who do challenges and all that. Because I used to do challenges. Oh sure, yeah. I mean, yeah. And then after like experiencing YouTube by going to conventions, I'm like, I want to do my own thing. Sure. So I watched like Casey Neistat. Okay. Uh, Sawyer Hartman. Um, Fun for Louis. Cool. Cool. Yeah, a lot of lot of daily vloggers. Okay. Um, but a lot of filmmakers, like directors, like Sawyer Hartman. He created a short film called Parallax, and just recently, he's just the a big film company has said, "Hey, we want to turn this into a feature film." 
Wow. So it's gonna, he's going to make a feature film. Like This is huge for the YouTube world. Sure. See, yeah. that's, that's another example of doing something here and it leading to bigger exactly. platforms. He's now a director. Yeah. Like a big director. Wow. So, yeah, and there's people like Connor Franter and Troy Sivan. Yeah. Very cool. What, mm. what is it about vlogs that you like? Like daily vlogs? Yeah. Because like, it's, it's just a person talking about their life in camera like, yeah. I went to the store today. What, what attracts you to that? Um, you're not alone. Okay. You see a lot of daily vloggers, they're going through life struggles. You're like, okay. You know, so when you eventually experience that struggle, you're not like, okay, this is a natural thing. You right. And I, it's a good, it's good. You watch Shay Tards? Oh, yes. Shay yeah. Carl? You know, when he has kids and he's going through struggles, you're like, okay, when I have kids, I'm going to go through those struggles. Right. So you're not as depressed when you go through those struggles because you know it's a natural thing. Yeah. And how did so, he go through with it? Yeah. He's, Shay Carl is, Shay Carl is so motivating. Oh, absolutely. He has helped me so much in Very my cool. final year of high school. Yeah. Um, got me through so much. Um, I used to get teased a lot of high school because I, feel I like watched <laughs> YouTubers and wanted yeah. to do this and I was an actor and... Any sort of creative person will always get exactly, you yeah. know, because you're putting yourself out there. Yeah, you know, but it really, you're the one doing better. Out of Absolutely, else. absolutely. You're being yourself, you're not hiding away, being the jock or yeah, exactly. It's like that painting that Shay Carl has. You know, it's all the blue faces, the, the yeah. one smiley face. Yeah, happiness that right is there. your choice. Exactly, exactly. Mm. That's very cool. It, so vlogging feels like you're there with them. Yes, you know, like you're you feel like, like your friends. You were there life. too. Which yeah. think about how weird it must be for them. As you were saying, when you meet people that know you, they're like, oh, Shay, I saw your second kid born on YouTube. And he you're goes, like, I uh, don't know who you are. Yeah, you're creepy. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, I haven't watched in a while. They're not using the nicknames anymore. The Shay Tards, are they? Like Baby Tard, Rock Tard. Um, I, they, they use those nicknames at first to hide their real names. I remember they? that because yeah. they were still, when I met them at Playlist Live, they were still all using the names. The yeah. baby was Rock Tard. They hadn't had the second one yet. Like Baby Tard. And yeah, you know, Tard. Baby Tard. And, yeah, Princess Tard. Yes, they, Sun Tard. <laughs> they've, yeah, I'm going to be honest, because everyone knows their names. Yeah. Though. That's not oh, a big sure. deal anymore. I've noticed they have started using their real names, but they'll still call them like Brotard. And like right, yeah, Suntard yeah. It's like Johnny Depp being called Jack Sparrow. Exactly. You know, they still have that persona that you'll yeah. obviously be called forever. Yeah. You know? So, and the kids, they'll respond to any, both the names. Of course. So, of course. Yeah. Very cool. Um, have you ever been recognized outside of a, a convention? convention? No. Not yet. Not yet. It's happening. It'll happen soon. I, I can't wait for it to happen. I want it. It's hopefully that I don't sound big headed or anything, but I want that. No, it's cool. It's, it's, it would, it's proof. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it would be a good feeling. And I, every time I go out, like I go out shopping, I'm like, okay, what if, what if, what if it does happen? How am I going to react? <laughs> but it's going to happen when I least expect it. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm just going to be out one day, totally forgetting about I'm a YouTuber and it's going to happen. I'm like, <laughs> well, what? Hopefully it's not when you're having like a really bad day where they messed up your order. Oh you're like, God. what is this? Yeah. <laughs> That's <Okay>. the horror. <laughs> Well, like I've, I've learned that um, being an actor and being a YouTuber, I've had a lot of people say, you're going to get big and all that sort of sure. stuff. I don't know if they say that to everyone, but I've had directors say that to me. And I, I have a feeling like that's, that's got to mean something when a director says that to you. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I've worked with you for like 24 hours, not even. Yeah. And I hope, I wish that for you. I wish that you for know you know as I mean? well. It's, it's a cool thing. I mean, I... I always bring it back to cosplay because that's what I know. Yeah. You know what I mean? I try YouTube for a bit and I just didn't have so the you're, focus. So you cosplay on YouTube. Exactly. Together we're podcasts. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember... And acting. Uh, exactly. Acting podcasts. Yeah. This isn't real, is it? Like we're, we're acting like <laughs> we're it's actors. a podcast. Yeah. I remember um, I went to... Like I said, I made a name for myself as the Cabbage Merchant. I went to like five or six different cons last year as the Cabbage Merchant. Because yeah. once I blew up in Miami, I was like, this is pretty cool. So I went to all the other ones. I eventually made the cart out of wood. You and really? I took that, yeah. Do you got a picture? So, I, I do, I do. I'll show you after. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, I, all my followers, almost all of them on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, are all from the Cabbage Merchants. So they know me as that. That's cool. I went to, I live in Naples. Mm -hmm. I went to Fort Lauderdale, which is two hours away. Is I it? had won tickets to a rave. It was a, I, I don't know if you watch Game of Thrones. Yeah, I watch right. Game of Thrones. I okay. haven't watched the last season. I'm, still... I'm a massive fan. I've read all the books. Yeah, I'm and, not um, watching this current season. You know Hodor? Yes, yes, okay. Hodor. Yes, exactly. Hodor. Hodor. <laughs> well, Hodor in real life is a DJ who travels the world. That's yeah. what he does. Yeah, I think and I read an article about he that. He did that for like 20 years before Game of Thrones. 
Now he that wasn't he's got, an actor, was he? Now, no. now that he's got the Game of Thrones platform, it's Rave of Thrones, DJ Hodor. That is so travels cool. Travels the country. Like, countries. He just did Europe, then he came to America. What? And, like, in the middle of his DJs, like, Hodor. Yeah. You know, he, uh, he plays with the different knobs, and halfway through his set, he plays the Game of Thrones theme. Like, oh. It's cool. Well, I won tickets to see him in Fort Lauderdale. I was like, dude, all right, That's cool. Awesome. I have a large print copy of the first book with autographs on it that I've collected over the last like two or three years. So you've read so the books? And... I've read them all, yeah, Jeez. that are out so far. Yeah. And um, George, please, the next one. Yeah. Uh, so I drove two hours because I got the tickets, and I tweeted him before. I was like, hey, man, do you do autographs at your shows? And he goes, well, if the venue asks for one, short, sure, but I'm happy to sign anything if you can get it to me. So, mm. Good enough for me. <laughs> so I drive two hours. It's a rave, so I know a lot of people are in costume, and I have an Oberyn Martell costume yeah. that I put together. Uh, the red viper, you know, eyes. Mm -hmm. um, so I show up in this costume. The, what I didn't know, because I'm not really a big rave guy. Yeah. It's just not my sort of thing. I, it's semi-social anxiety. Like I, yeah. I, if I'm in a scene where I'm like, I don't feel very great here, you know, I kind of keep to myself. Right. Rave's one of those scenes. I'm great with people at cons, interacting. I Same. love interacting with people. But, you know, like if you're at a party and if you're someone who doesn't drink and everyone's drinking, you're like, I'm going to talk yeah, about it's, it's movies. Very, like, it's weird. It's awkward. You're very, I'm very awkward. When you're in the those. sober one. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so I'm at this club with a rave going on. Never been to a rave. I go to bars every now and then, not like this. Yeah. And it started at nine. What I didn't know was they have opening acts and then they have the headliner. Headliner's obviously Hodor. So... He doesn't come on until midnight. Oh. I didn't know this. So I get there at 9. Like three hours. The first guy was great. He was dressed as Khal Drogo, and he was very good. The next three people were not so great. Right. <laughs> so Hodor comes on, does an awesome set. I mean, there's fire. There's people dressed as Daenerys with fire swords oh. doing a show. There's a, a, a little person, dwarf. I'm not sure what they like to be called. If I was offensive, my bad. My bad. <laughs> and he's got a sword, and he's doing his thing. He's yeah. the most jacked human being I've ever seen. Holy like, God. four foot eight, but... Six pack abs you can see from the back, <laughs> like massive, right? So you're like, what is happening? That what is, is so cool. It's like so it's, intense. Like it was like time. a circus, so crazy, right? So the show's over, and I walk over to the security, and I was like, hey, um, so listen, he tweeted me, uh, uh, if there's any way that I can like go back there, he said he would sign my book, and he goes, well, do you have a VIP ticket? I was like, oh no, I I didn't even pay for these tickets, I won them. He goes, oh, uh, well, I mean, Did you show them I don't your know. tweet? That's what they asked for. Right. At first, they're like, oh, you don't have a ticket, sorry. And I go, well, I mean, he tweeted me. So the security guy goes backstage. He comes back with one of the people who work with Christian Narm, who's yeah. Hodor. And he goes, do you have the tweet? I was like, I do. Yeah, yeah. And I pulled my phone out of my boot and I showed it to him. He goes, go get your book. Yes. I was like, what? So I get, I come back with my book. I'm running. Like, the club is cleared out. I'm the last person. Just, oh, oh, so it's quick. like all over and everything. All done. Nice. And they're like, we're not sure because he's not feeling very well. He goes, go get your book. It's like, hell, I'm not booking it. Running. <laughs> so I, get, I come back, I get my book, and I'm expecting to give them my book. They go get it signed, bring it back to me. Yeah. You totally been, for you it. You've been happy with that? You know? I, absolutely. Yeah. And they're like, no, no, come on back. I got the whole VIP treatment. Got to go back there. I got to meet him. Took a picture with him. Yeah. Talked for a second. No He's way. a massive human being. Yeah. Oh yeah. J like he could kill a man with his <laughs> hand. It's huge. Nice, but is he nice? Super nice. That's even cool. feeling sick. He was like, oh yeah. He's all that's sweaty what, and tired. I like about big people, you know, they they really care about their. Yeah, they're the fans. gentle giants, you know, yeah. or they're the mountain, you know. You've got both ends. <laughs> Terrifying. Oh, very nice cuddly teddy bear exactly so he was very cool he's guessing the autographs i have he's like who's this one? Oh, oh that right. one's really hard how'd you get that yeah so it's very cool but i i bring this up because uh around the time he came on i got a phone call from my girlfriend i had to go outside and talk mm -hmm. while i'm out there dressed as prince oberon not a great one but enough <laughs> to be enough to know who i am some guy comes up and he goes are you the cabbage guy from supercon no way dead serious and i was like what well, uh you're not even uh, wearing the outfit. Not even wearing the outfit. Not wearing green at all. And he's you're, you're the cabbage guy from Supercon. I was like, I, huh, I, I'm on the phone. I will be ready. <laughs> so I finished my phone call. I go back in, and they're taking pictures with me. And they're like, oh, it's this guy, cabbage guy from Supercon. They posted it on my page. Hey, I saw you at the rave. I'm like, what is no this? Way. It's so weird. 
That must be you know? such a good feeling. It's going to happen to you very soon. Uh, That's why I bring it up, because you need to prepare yourself. Because yeah, I was not prepared, and there's a lot of, uh, 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 you know? <laughs> it's, it's very cool when you put yourself out there and get a positive return. Oh, you know, I'm sure YouTube is like lots of trolls. <laughs> oh. So when you get that, I mean, how do you, do, how do you feel when uh, it's like an outpouring? Like, do you ever get like a super, a video just clicks? And then a lot of people watching to get a lot of feedback? Yes. Um, How is that? I've recently put up a video called To My Kids. Nice. It's a video for my future kids to watch. Hey, there um, you go. Inspired by another YouTuber who did a To My Future Wife. Oh, that's nice. Yes. So um, I did a To My Kids video and it blew up. When I mean blew up for me, it got a thousand views because that's blown that up That is me. huge. Yeah. I usually average 200 to 300 views, 400 that's maybe. That's also huge. Yeah. So um, to get a thousand views, I was so happy. But this video was special to me because it was to my future kids. Sure. You know, I made it's it personal. Little, I made it a little funny, made it a little serious. Um, as soon as I put it up, everyone loved it. I haven't had a bad reaction to it yet. Really? Yeah. Every, every comment is positive. Everyone loved it. Um, it got over a hundred likes. Nice. None of my videos have got over a hundred likes. That's serious. So I'm like past a hundred, 120 likes. I'm Dude. so happy about that. It's one of my favorite videos. I showed my parents. My parents loved it. Usually my parents are like kind of iffy yeah, about YouTube. Yeah, do your YouTube thing. That's cool. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know I, they, they believe that YouTube won't get me anywhere. Of course. Because they don't understand it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But YouTube is such a big thing. It's massive. It's, yeah, YouTube created my interest in filmmaking and it, it even it motivated me more inspired me to be an actor even more oh cool so i'm putting this video up my parents love the video which made me which made me even more happy about it right so I'm sure. if they love it i love it even more so i was like okay this is gonna be like a huge video you know i gotta hype it up so i hyped it up on twitter that everyone was excited i put it up boom i just let it go right you know, i went out went for a walk did not check my phone at all Came back home, checked it, boom, positive reactions. I was like, oh, oh, thank God. Thank God, I can sleep in peace. So, um, definitely one of my favorite videos. What would you that. say, like, your, uh, I don't want to say targeted demographic, but what would you say, like, your audience is? It's like male, female, what's, uh, how would you gauge your audience? Is it, is it diverse? Is it pointed? You got beautiful hair. This, this, I had this conversation with a lot of my YouTube friends. Yeah. Um, a lot of my fellow YouTube friends, their demographic... Because we have this thing on YouTube where you can check what viewers you have, like male, female. Oh, cool. A lot of their ones is mostly female. Like, it's like 80% female, 20% male. I'm like, oh, mine is probably like that. You know, I'm a young, attractive, right. teen boy. I check it. It's 50-50. Really? Mm -hmm. That's like, very cool. I'm like, okay. You know, that's good. Yeah, that's, that's abs 50, absolutely. 50. That's it. That's probably even better than... That's what you want. Female. Yeah, that exactly. That means you apply to everyone. Exactly, yeah. So, um, I feel so happy about that. For, for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, I get, I get young girls, they like me. I get young guys, they like me as well. Sure. They, you know, they're like, oh, you're really attractive. I'm like, yeah, thank you. Right. I appreciate <laughs> that. Yeah. Um, I try really hard. Sometimes it goes a bit far. I'm like, okay. Right. Let's dial it back. That, yeah, take it back. <laughs> I'm attractive. You're attractive. See you later. Yeah, see ya. Bro fist. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> exactly. Um, so it's it's a lot of my friends were surprised about it too. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So I, I actually I might check it later and see what it is because it's been a while. But um, I'm very happy with the fifty fifty. Yeah, as you should be. I mean, yeah. that's that's very cool it's, to have. I think I the range. I personally think it's better. Than oh sure, 80, of course. 20. Of course. Yeah. What is a positive memory that you have related to YouTube that sticks out to you? Mm. Like, wow, I'll always remember this. Like, this was, you know, your first like, your first something. What was? Um, my first subscriber. Yeah? It's a girl called Nikki. Really? And um, first week she subscribed. Never, I don't know her. But I, I know her, but I was like, okay, there's this girl, Nikki. She's um, been a subscriber of mine since the beginning. And um, I was like, okay. So she watches all my videos. She's friends with me on Snapchat. She tweets me all the time. I met her at Playlist Live Orlando. Really? I knew who she was. I saw her from the other side of the convention. She ran to me. I ran to her. She was my first subscriber. Right? Of course. She's special. That's important. She's a special place in my heart. She's the first person to take the time to be like this. Exactly. So um, I took a picture with her. Had a short conversation with her. It was really nice. And I'm going to, hopefully I see her again. 
That is very cool. Yeah. Who was the first person you subscribed to? First person I subscribed to, Troy yeah. Sivan. Really? Yes. He's an, he's an Australian YouTuber. Makes sense. He's got over a million subscribers. He's a musician as well, so. Very cool. Yeah. Do you play any instruments? No. No. Do you want to play any instruments? I used to play guitar. Yeah? I don't really play it anymore. Did you play it any good? No. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Not a musician. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's very cool. And I'm sure if Nikki's listening. Ah, uh, she will Hi, be. Nikki. That's amazing. She's, ah, uh, she's amazing. I, my, one of my first YouTube memories was um, f- uh, favoriting. Do you know Make Me Bad? He's one of the older ones. He did a video called Insane Driver. Yeah. And it's literally just him like sped up. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> like hitting it. It was the dumbest thing. But it made me laugh so hard. And I remember the same like, you were my first video. And we had that moment. Right. So that's very cool that like you, it, it's cool of you to remember mm. your first subscriber and to have that important. And, you know, from someone who, if you had an actor that you've been following and they were like, hey, man, yeah. that acknowledgement is yeah. very cool to do. I, I acknowledge her all the time. That's very cool. she's been there since the beginning. Right. I've had subscribers come and go. Of course. Yeah, so... As with the internet. Exactly. Yeah, but she's she's stuck around. It's been over a year and she's still watching my videos. She still likes me. That's cool. Yeah. She's, There's the interaction. She's, she's 14. Yeah, okay. But she's cool. She's she's a really nice girl. Very cool. It's always yeah. good to get positive and she's she's come to me for advice with friends and like... Hey. You know, all that sort of stuff. And it feels good. Like, I... I've had... This is another topic. I've had a sure. lot of I've had a lot of YouTubers private message me and they're like say stuff like they're suicidal or you know they go into this really deep stuff. Right. Which makes me really uncomfortable because I'm not a professional. Sure. I, I feel stressed like you don't what, want what that do pressure. I, do? I don't I don't want to give her the wrong advice. Right. I don't want to be like it's okay, like everything will be fine. So I'm made a script about it. I'm definitely going to film a video about it. Called cool. I'm not a professional because I'm not. Right, right. So I really, I would really appreciate it if they wouldn't come to me for that advice. The best person to go to, <laughs> there are like websites and there are numbers to call. Even your parents are the best people to go to. Absolutely, get help. Exactly. Don't just fester with it and sit. Yeah, don't, don't, don't go to a YouTuber who has over a thousand subscribers because you're just going to put him under stress. Exactly. Yeah, of course. Because you know that's what I do. Because I stress every time someone comes out. I can't sleep at night because I'm like. Are they okay? Do right. I, do I get, do I have to call someone about this? Because you care. Exactly. Which is very I care about everyone. which is very cool. Because yeah. a lot of people can get a following and then they it becomes more about them and they change. It's it's happened. You know. Yeah. I, I'm sure. Happened. So it's very cool that you, uh, you know, you have that interaction and you do you do care. You, know, yeah. you can tell by the way you're talking, mm. and that is a lot of pressure. You know. It is. It's but it says something about you and how they feel about you that they would come to you with this. They feel comfortable talking. You know what I mean? So that's something. But then again, but, there are people who want it, who want that much attention from me that they make up a story like true, that. True. True. That is something you got to be worried about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I, my parents warned me about this. They said, "Okay, you're getting into this business. If you end up getting big, this is going to happen." I'm like, "It's not going to happen." <laughs> right? My parents keep me level-headed. That's yeah. good. Yeah, yeah you want to so, stay so my humble. Viewers, they keep me level headed. Well. Stay humble. Exactly. That's the most important yeah. thing. Like it's, I don't, I, I can't talk to people who have that air. I can't. You know. Neither can I. You know, like you were teased. I was teased. You have that, like they're oppressive. Mm. You know, humility is like okay, we're people. Exactly. You know, and I, I think that's important when you have any sort of following to be yeah. on the level of everyone else because you are. At the end mm. of the day, you're a person. Exactly. You know what yeah. I mean? So don't like. That's why when a lot of actors, they get really big and they kind of turn into dicks. You're like, mm. you realize I, I, the my, power behind your wheelhouse is run by fans of yours. Yeah. You know? Your fans have made you who you are. You exactly. have got you to where you are today. Exactly. Appreciate them. Exactly. Like my parents have always taught me to be humble my whole life. Absolutely. I think I'm a humble guy. Same. Same. It's, yeah. it's the best way to be. Yeah, exactly. I, I think you appreciate stuff more. When you're like, yeah. okay, well, this is a gift. Yeah. You know what I mean? The second you start being like, I deserve all of this. Yeah. And you like, feel like it's owed. I don't care about my fans. I only care about the money. Like, exactly. Come on, get you know? seriously. But doing it the way that you're doing it with, you know, a creative mind. Mm-hmm. And you put yourself out there and it's a give and take. You have a relationship with your followers. Exactly. It's very cool. And it, especially being a smaller YouTuber, you appreciate each and every one of them. Absolutely. Because the viewers who are watching a small YouTuber. Right. Like, you it's know, an investment on their part. Yeah. You Whereas know? when you get big, you know, you're going to have so many people like watching your videos and it's going to be tough. I've had a lot of fans who are like, don't forget about me when you get big. Right. It's like, I'm not going to forget about you. Gotcha. Yeah. No, that's cool. Like, 
it's something to remember mm. because it gets to a point where your follower can become a number. Mm-hmm. You know, there are people that are like, when I have a hundred subscribers, that's a hundred people. That's every person's a percent. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like one person, I lose a percent of my audience. Yeah. Whereas if you've got a million followers, I mean, 20 can go and you're like, yeah, I've got a million. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm still, if that happened to me, I'd be like, why did they leave? But right. Like, yeah. Why? I want them to I'm come exact, back. Am I, I doing something wrong? All the time. And I'm like, oh man. Yeah, like, <laughs> I always want to know what I'm doing wrong so I can fix it. But then again, like. Maybe you're not doing anything wrong. Maybe they're just not interested anymore. True. I, I and think it's their choice. It's not sure. your choice. You can't hate them for doing that. That's part of being a performer. Life. You want to... You want, you want to... You want the approval. You want, to, you want everyone to be happy. Exactly. But you can't make everyone happy. That's life. No. It, you're always going to be Making you happy is the most important thing. Exactly. If you're happy... Exactly. Put life. that out there. Get what you give. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll definitely uh, end on that. Josh, thank you so right. much. Thank for, you for having me. For coming right. on my first episode. I really appreciate, appreciate it. Appreciate it. I feel like we're best friends now. I feel like too. <laughs> we're going to have so much fun being we actors on set. <laughs> actors and acting like actors. Yeah. I'm, this This is fun. This is my first podcast. So. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> this is, is going to be something big. We should do this more often. I agree. We'll definitely yeah. have you back on. Definitely. Um, good luck with YouTube. Thank you. Good luck with cosplay. Uh, good luck with acting. Sweet. And race to the next level. Of acting. Yeah. Uh, where can we find you online? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Josh Cummins underscore. Okay. And my YouTube channel is youtube.com slash Josh Cummins 95. Cool. Uh, my Instagram is Josh Cummins underscore. Um, basically, if you find one of those social media things, you can find every other one. So. Perfect. Yeah. I like it. All connected. It is. All connected. Very simple and easy. Yeah. Cool, man. Thanks. All right. Thanks for having me, man. Bye. Swag yellow bitch money. <laughs> that was dope. So dope. All the dope. All right, guys, bye. Thank you. <laughs>